Now that we know what a blob is, or binary large object, and what an API is, or an application programming interface, um, and if you haven't seen those videos, I recommend you go back and watch them before watching this video about shims. When we ask ourselves in Android, what is a shim, um, we bring up a rather interesting question. And so here we have uh, the Wikipedia definition of a shim, of course, is that in computer programming, a shim is a library that transparently intercepts API calls and changes the arguments passed, handles the operation itself, or redirects the operation elsewhere. So. Um, of course, it says shims can be used to support an old API in a newer environment or a new API in an older environment. Shims can also be used for running programs on different software platforms than they were developed for. Wow, that's a lot of technical jargon. Let's think about what this means. Um, I do want to point out uh, briefly here that Adam Conway wrote an excellent, absolutely excellent article on shims using some great examples for cameras and I'm going to provide a link in the description so that way you guys can click on that and read through that because I guarantee you you will only benefit by reading this article it was very well written and, and has some really great examples in there as well but in general the idea of a shim in the physical world that we live in is used to fill the gap between something. So for instance, if you are building a house and you want to put in a window, uh, you want the window to uh, be level and the hole for the window is slightly bigger than the window itself. So you put in little shims to level the window and to fill the gap and to fill the hole so that the window sits in the right place. Um, you could uh, even look up, for instance, on uh, YouTube or various other places on the Internet and watch some tutorials of people using shims on windows and door frames and things like that. So a shim literally just fills the gap. And so what happens in the Android world is we had those blobs, those binary large objects that they didn't uh, provide any source code for, and we need to use them to operate some hardware on the phone. So we'll use the, uh, the idea of a fingerprint sensor here. We'll just think about that in terms of how uh, we can use a shim. So if the fingerprint sensor requires a binary large object, a vendor blob, to work, and if you need more help with vendor blobs, I, I recommend you go back and watch our vendor blob video because that will explain that in more detail. But it needs this pre-compiled code to function. And so let's say that vendor blob was written in Android Marshmallow. That's great. So you built your custom ROM, you use the vendor blob, the fingerprint sensor works normally and all is well. Then you decide to upgrade your phone by building Android Nugget for it. But the vendor blob is still stuck back in Android Marshmallow. So the problem is, if you try to use that Android Marshmallow um, vendor blob, it's going to use the API calls that we looked at in a previous video, um, and it's going to try to use the standard APIs for the Marshmallow level to do the work in this, in this ROM of controlling and interfacing with that fingerprint sensor. Unfortunately, if there were changes in the API, in that application programming interface between Android Marshmallow and Android Nugget, and maybe they changed the interface a little bit and the way that the tools talk to each other and the different commands you would use, then that old vendor blob is going to be using the old command. So we're going to make up a, a fake command here just so we can... Uh, visualize this better, but let's say the, the fingerprint sensor uh, in Marshmallow, let's say that the API is scan fingerprint would be the name of the API call for it to actually interface with the fingerprint scanner and scan your finger when you put it on the on the pad. But let's say, since the old method was scan fingerprint, let's say in Android uh, Nugget, they changed it to be um, scanning fingerprint instead of scan. 
So now it's scanning. Well, if you use that old vendor blob that's pre-compiled and you can't change it because you don't have the source code, and that's the only thing you've got that makes that fingerprint sensor work, it's going to use the wrong call. And it's going to say, scan fingerprint. And the new API is going to say, I don't know what that means. That's not my list of available commands. My command is scanning fingerprint, not scan fingerprint. So I can't utilize that, and I'm going to disregard or error or worse, crash, trying to understand what you're trying, telling me to do. This is where a shim comes in. So a shim, um, and it gives several examples here uh, of using like older JavaScripts or something like that. But in our example, the fingerprint uh, sensor is that this shim can be written by the developer or the programmer, and it's going to say, OK, I want you to intercept everything coming from this vendor blob that says scan fingerprint, and I want you to replace that scan fingerprint with the word scanning fingerprint. So now it's the proper call to use this older marshmallow vendor blob in this newer nugget operating system. And so what does that look like might be the question now in your mind. And for that, I really highly recommend uh, you know, looking at Adam Conway's article. Once again, I'm going to put the link in the description because he just does a really, really great job here. And uh, he's doing a, the example of a camera blob and how it normally would go straight to the operating system. But now it's going to go from the camera blob into the shim and then to the operating system that allows it to work. And it gives he gives some uh, excellent examples of what some of these look like and the different symbols and, and uh, how they can figure that out. Once again, superb article, and I'm going to link that in the description. Hopefully you'll read that. And uh, be sure to tell uh, Mr. Conway what a great job he did there. Um, on that article. But just to give you the general idea that shim is going to be a piece of code that that a developer would write that's going to stand in the gap between this one vendor blob and the operating system. And it could be that the vendor blob is too new and you want it to use the old command. So you can use it, let's say that phone was built for Marshmallow and that vendor blob for the fingerprint sensor was Marshmallow, but you really want to build a Lollipop version. Well, of course, Lollipop had less commands than Marshmallow did, so you actually might have to intercept some of the commands and either get rid of them so they don't crash things or uh, you know, um, change them into a command that is available on the older operating system. So you can use it for backwards compatibility. You can use it for uh, forward compatibility, <clears throat> where you use an older uh, program to go um, work on a newer operating system, or vice versa, a newer program to work on an older operating system. An example of that, in Microsoft Windows, uh, they use the application compatibility toolkit that uh, allows these libraries for backward compatibility so that way you can use shims to simulate older versions of Windows so that way older programs can run on these newer versions of Windows. And uh, usually you use, uh, you use these different uh, APIs and you choose like compatibility mode and uh, choose a, what version of Windows you want this program to run at. And that allows you to play your really old you know, Windows 95 games on your uh, Windows 10 computer, for example. So just a couple of examples of how a shim might work. And once again, please be sure to check out, um, you know, Mr. Conway's article here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a really great read and does an excellent job of uh, pointing out how um, shims can be uh, found, how they can be um, created and how they uh, do the work that they are designed for.